What's going on everyone? Happy Monday. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. Hope you had a great weekend. If you had to take a COVID test, I hope you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Monday edition of the Virus Update for Monday, November 11th, 2024. That's right. Here in the United States, it is Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day to all the veterans, and thank you so much for your service to our country. If you're new to my channel, you have clicked on to today's Virus Update. We do these a few times a week, used to be daily. We've changed it to a few times a week. We want to stay informed with what's going on with COVID, influenza, bird flu. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a moment. And all these other viruses, this is the place to do it. I keep you informed by showing you news, data, wastewater. We're going to look at a ton of wastewater sites today because, well, we didn't do wastewater Sunday this week, so let's make it a wastewater Monday. Why not? Want to stay informed? Just subscribe down below. Give this a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, share this video with anyone you know, and of course, leave your comments down below. All right, starting off with some news that was breaking over the weekend. Yet again, another H5N1 bird flu news drop that happened over a weekend, and this time it was not even in the United States. It was in North America, just not the United States. It was in Canada, in British Columbia, where a teenager from British Columbia, has been hospitalized for H5N1. And here's the deal with this. The H5 case, they don't know how he got this. There is no source, clear. there's no clear source of how he got this infection or this person got the infection. And the other problem is that this individual teenager um, has been hospitalized, which means if you're hospitalized, it is a pretty serious case, especially the fact that we're dealing with a younger person, a teenager, that is being hospitalized, and, you know, it has to be pretty serious if you're getting hospitalized for H5N1. So, yes, this is not good, and, of course, we're going to keep an eye on this. Hopefully, they are transparent with us from Canada. Hopefully, they tell us when the person is out of the hospital, uh, just the symptoms that they had, all this information. I, I hope we really find out the full story, but I can understand that it's possible we may not find out more about this because, you know, sometimes you hear something about and then it just disappears. All right, this was something I uh, saw yesterday, and I put, How mysterious. Overcrowding emergency department in Westchester, Pennsylvania, Right where, if you're watching my videos last week, right where COVID in wastewater is going up. The Ch Penn Medicine Chester County Hospital reported yesterday around the lunchtime hour that their emergency department was overcrowding. And at the same time, a nearby wastewater showed this. Look at the wastewater site for COVID. And it was going up. Coincidence? I don't know. We'll take a look at EMS calls for that county in just a little bit. All right, here's something I find interesting. Many bird flu infections among dairy workers go undetected. Yeah, back earlier this year when we were hearing about human cases, we were also hearing about other people with similar symptoms, but for whatever reason, they were not tested for bird flu or there was no announcement as to whether or not they were positive. Yes, this is a serious problem and we are missing a lot of cases. We don't actually know the extent of how bad this actually is. We have seen H5N1 or bird flu, H5 bird flu, show up in wastewater. It's been showing up in California. But again, I, th I really do believe we probably are missing a lot of cases when it comes to H5N1. Alrighty, let's take a look at a COVID projection for the next month. Here's Mike Horger. He did an update with his uh, PMC COVID-19 forecasting model for November 11th, 2024. And uh, this is rather interesting. Now, please don't shoot me. I'm just a messenger. Some may not agree with this projection whatsoever. Some may say it's overdone. Some may say it's underdone. I doubt people will say it's underdone, but I'm pretty sure some will say this is probably likely to be off, but here's what he's saying. We're starting to get our first glimpse of the shape of the winter wave. Expected transmission a month from now will be 1.3 million daily infections. Oh, that's oh so very bad. That's not good at all. Best case... 0.7 million, or other words, 700,000 daily infections. We can hope the best case would be correct. Worst case? Oh, yikes. 
Worst case would be 1.8 million daily infections, which means that would be similar to last year, although at that point I think that would be higher than we were at that point last year. There's nothing in the data yet to suggest the winter will be markedly different from last year, which is very bad news. Within three weeks, we'll have a much better sense of what path we're on and what the peak of the wave may look like around New Year's Eve. I can hope, only hope, that these projections do trend lower. Let's, we can only hope, but let's take a look at the chart here. We can see here that he does give us a range. Here's the best case, here's the worst case, and then there's something, the composite, which is something in between, which even at that shows a month from now, on December 11th, we would be north of 1 million daily infections. But there's also that best case. And if that best case happens, well, guess what? We would be doing a lot better than last year and i have seen other projections that say hey maybe things will be lower than this we'll just have to see what happens as of yet we're in the very early stages of our uh, new wave it's matter of fact it may not even be rising yet in all areas some states are rising many are not and we can see right now we're at about 400,000 daily infections but no matter what happens there is one thing that is guaranteed new variant or not new variant thanksgiving is very reliable and dependable for one thing causing more covid cases it has always caused more covid cases since this all started back in 2020 so yeah this is not uh the best of news to see that his composite is saying north of one million cases a day again but kind of to be expected we will see what actually happens and one can hope his future model runs suggest maybe next week we'll come out and say hey maybe it's looking lower it's possible but hey i'm just messaging out there what his model is showing and what mike is projecting all right just a quick reminder my website is datareport.info i am going to do some posting on my site this evening looks like i have some things to catch up on myself because i've been busy lately all right taking a look here now at air quality data and i'm going to tell you right now off the bat it's not good in some areas we do have multiple wildfires which continue to be ongoing there's the ones in the west coast and then there is one near new york city and surprisingly this is not coming up all that bad but trust me if you go watch my weather video from today which i just recorded i'm going to upload it at the same time i upload this video you'll see there is a huge smoke plume coming from the wildfire in north jersey yeah that is oh so concerning and it's not something we usually see a lot of in the east but hey it's been dry and on the west coast we still have the fire the mountain fire near ventura california near los angeles and that is leading to some air quality issues as well philadelphia yesterday had 740 ems incidents one of the lowest numbers in a while and if we went back to saturday you will see saturday was relatively low as well that was also 740 and kind of odd that it was the same number two days in a row I suppose it could happen. All right, want to learn more about climate and weather? Take a look at this. Here's my uh, climate data report X, and I also have the X account, or not X account, I also have an account on Blue Sky. And of course, you can check out my climate data report YouTube channel, where pretty soon I will be posting today's video, which I have already recorded. Taking a look at Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, we do see right now there are actively 13. EMS calls, two for respiratory emergency, actually make that three for respiratory emergency, cardiac emergency is showing up, and a bunch of other things. Uh, yikes, look at Chester County, Pennsylvania. We're seeing respiratory difficulty a few times. We're seeing a sick person a few times. We're also seeing a stroke show up. Yeah, there's some calls to be had right now. Not happy about that. And let's take a look at the hospital status. And we do see yellow showing up in York county pennsylvania in york pennsylvania and it says emergency department on divert that's not good and it is overcrowding at this time and i also see look at this that hospital in chester county pennsylvania is yikes high patient volume there as well i'm also seeing it looks like in delaware county high patient volume i'm seeing high patient volume again in another hospital in delaware county and the lehigh valley Yikes, it's just a mess. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hospitals yellow. Let's see. Jesus. Luke's, St. Luke's Anderson Campus, 
uh, at capacity. Emergency Department at capacity at the Bethlehem campus. How about in Allentown? Emergency Department near capacity. This is just totally ridiculous. Then we get to St. Luke's in Warren, which is western New Jersey. That is near capacity. Uh, we really have a hospital issue ongoing up in the Lehigh Valley portion of Pennsylvania right now. A part of the problem there is not all the pandemic. The pandemic does not help, but there's also a population boom going on in that area. And because of that, it is uh, impacting the um, volume levels of patients. The Poconos, St. Luke's, Monroe campus at capacity. So, uh, yeah, very busy at the hospitals in eastern Pennsylvania. We can't see Philadelphia. The only way I could find out is if I listened to dispatch and they would say if a hospital is going on divert. All right, let's take a look at the viral activity levels in Canada. COVID-19 is moderate at this time. Flu A is low, flu B is low, RSV is listed at moderate at this time. Taking a look at the Walgreens COVID positivity index, and we see that COVID at this time is listed at 13.2%. The prior week is 14.1%. That's a difference of down 0.9%. Testing was slightly down this week. 4,009 total tests versus 4,190. Let's take a look at some individual states. We'll start off in the west and make our way to the east. I'm seeing red in Washington. What could that be? Well, it looks like your testing's down. 55 tests versus 57. Because of that, your positivity index did really go up. 20% versus 10.4%. That's a difference of up 9.6%. We'll have to keep an eye on that, though, because... I mean, you're not doing a lot of testing, but that is quite the big positivity rate increase Increase at this time. In California, the positivity rate is 7.7%. The prior week was 13.9%, down by 6.2%. Total test, 143 versus 137. Positivity rate down, testing up. That is some good news. Now, some not so good news. Arizona, you do have a problem developing here. Your positivity rate for COVID is 30.2%. The prior week was 24.1%. That's a difference of up 6.1%. And no, testing's not down. Testing's actually up 172 versus 137, which signals that, yeah, your cases may be starting to rise once again. Texas, take a look at this. Yeah, this could be another signal. Texas, the positivity rate is 9.6%. The prior week is 8.9%. Difference of up, 0.7%. Total test, 664 versus 661. Just three tests more and just an ever so slight positivity rate increase. It could be the start of a new wave, maybe, or we'll have to just wait and see. Taking a look at Illinois, 16.8% COVID positivity rate. The prior week was 14%. 0.9%. That's up by 1.9%. 256 tests versus 269 tests. In Michigan, the positivity rate is 17.3% versus 17.6%. That is down by 0.3%. Total test, 127 versus 125. In Florida, the positivity rate for COVID is 9.7%. Last week was 10.4%. That's down 0.7%. Testing went up. Hey, you're still dropping. 443 total tests versus 434. Pennsylvania, the positivity rate has started to go up. But look at the testing. 44 tests versus 57. Not a lot of tests, but it went down. 20.5% positivity rate versus 15.8%. And that is up by 4.7%. New York State, the positivity rate is 25% versus 21.5%. That's up by 3.5%, but look at total tests. That is down. 132 total tests versus 158. We'll do some more states on the next virus update in a few days. Next, I do want to take a look at what is going on with the latest COVID variant, and I do need to refresh this, and the latest COVID variant still is the KP3.1.1 variant. This one has been dominant for quite some time now at 52%. That is the latest level. The level has changed, but it's been staying in control for a while. XCC is coming up a little bit more. It is at 28%, and that would potentially be the next variant to take over unless something comes up out of nowhere or just pops up and out takes that and XCC the only difference really is it's just a little slightly more transmissible not a lot more transmissible but slightly more transmissible which is why we have not seen an all of a sudden massive surge develop 
with COVID. And we will eventually see the next wave. It's coming. It's just it's not major difference with this. So therefore, we're not seeing just massive increases yet. We're seeing just gradual leveling and then will come the increase. And then, of course, Thanksgiving end of the ball game it is going to go up with thanksgiving because there's going to be people gathering millions of people are going to gather all across the united states all right let's take a look at some wastewater data nationally we can see here there does appear to be a slight increase in COVID at this time rsv though still low is starting to increase influenza a still low starting to increase a bit faster influenza b is extremely low despite the increase you're seeing here hmpv is still low norovirus is still on the rise and i am relatively concerned about that taking a look at the midwest we can see here the covid levels there are starting to rise at this time rsv still is low influenza a is still low influenza b is still low at this time hmpv is low and norovirus is high but look at this most recent update a little bit of a drop we'll have to see if that ends up correcting taking a look at the northeast now we can see covid levels in the northeast are starting to rise at this time rsv is still low influenza a is low influenza b is low hmpv is low norovirus listed at medium and continuing to rise that could soon go to the high category which is not good in the south at this time we can see covid levels are low not really seeing a rise yet it's corrected to being stable RSV continues to rise. That could go to medium soon, as could influenza A, which continues to rise. Influenza B is very low, as is HMPV. And norovirus is high and still rising at this time. Out in the West Coast, we can see here that COVID is rising ever so slightly. RSV is rising. Influenza A is rising. And it's still low for all these. Influenza B, HMPV is still low. And norovirus is high and still rapidly rising at this time all right we'll come back to uh wastewater in just a second i do have to show you something in new jersey there are two hospitals in new jersey that are being reported as full at this time one is cooper university healthcare and there was another one that's saying patient for inspira molica hill i hope i'm saying that correctly and it's saying here comments volume at capacity so yeah eastern pennsylvania and what's going on in new jersey i'm going to be searching here i want to know are there more states where i can see this because i think i found something for a new york state as well i'm going to just start searching the majority of the states and see what comes up all right let's get back to wastewater i want to get that in there before i forget about it and let's come down to los angeles and see what's going on there and we can see in los angeles definitely starting to see a rise in COVID, and it is listed at the medium category at this time rsv is still low wow your influenza a level is uh really taking off now that is now listed at high influenza b is low hmpv is low and we can see here norovirus at this time is listed high and still rising now let's take a look at memphis tennessee where COVID level is low rsv is low but rising influenza a influenza b hmpv extremely low at this time norovirus for you is listed medium and we can see there are some detections of hepatitis a but no mpox at this time now making our way to the east let's go over to how about we go up to connecticut and see what's going on in stamford connecticut and there we do see ever so slight rise in covid well there was and then it's gone back down once again so that is some good news but you can see here it may be starting to go up relatively soon it's not moving all that much just yet still low rsv is low at this time influenza a influenza b hmpv norovirus is low at this time mpox is also low and there are no detections of hepatitis a at this time Alrighty, folks that does it for the monday edition of the virus update we'll have our next update probably later in the week we'll see how much news accumulates if i have a ton of news stories to share with you i will come in as soon as wednesday and then of course guarantee there will be an update either friday or saturday as we get new cdc data later in the week but if a surprise video pops up in between of course i will let you know over on x if there's a lot of news that uh, we need to catch up on if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up subscribe down below if you're new hit that notification bell share this video with anyone you know and of course leave your comments down below i will see you all again next time until i see you again next time 
Have a fantastic day. Have a fantastic week. Stay safe, everyone, and thanks for watching.